We are at the cusp of $33.9 trillion in debt, and that is a collision with reality that we really may not witness for quite a while, but the number is there. But how will we deal with it? What will be the repercussions? That's what we're going to talk about in this video, and really so much more as we explore. In the ongoing series, Secrets of the Debt Clock, we are documenting the messages that the people at the usdebtclock.org are sending us because these expire and never will be seen again. So we're documenting them in a playlist on this channel. And I have to thank again Sign Up for making me aware of the, that these messages even existed because really unless you have a full uh, open window browser, you really don't know that this little message is here. But they only show up at certain times, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays in the evening. And uh, that's when they are, in the, the, but they're closed out in between. So we are going to be tracking these and see what the message is about. Well, before we get into that message, let's take a look at these numbers because, because part of this is indeed tracking what our debt is doing at a, at a rapid pace. And we can see that we're going to get to $34 trillion soon. And more than likely, we very well could see $33.9 trillion the next time I do one of these videos. But nonetheless, that is the reality that we're looking at down the road. We've just not seen the effects of it yet. We've not really seen the full-fledged uh, effects of all of this deficit spending. We have uh, inflation right now, and it has been persistent. Uh, well above the 2%, but even if it was at 2%, which is the Federal Reserve's target, that is still inflation. And yes, it is still bad. It's just that we accept it as being okay. Why? Because of what the nature of what the Federal Reserve has been doing ever since it started printing these, or right now, more like digitizing them. So, let's get into the latest secret message from the debt clock. It is called Reality Collision. Now, I think this can be interpreted in a number of different ways because it's really about altering reality, right? So it's a conversation. We've seen these, this style from them now for a while with conversations between two people. And you can see here, one is a bond number one, Mandela. And the other one is somebody holding a depends a garment uh, thing here, and uh, they're asking some questions here. So, the first statement from the Bond Mandela character is, we've just completed another mega test, and we couldn't be happier with the results. And that is with the super collider there at CERN. And so the question, the individual asked the question, what exactly are you testing? We're opening up a tiny wormholes in the reality matrix. Ooh, that does sound kind of scary, and logically so. The question is, is don't you think that could be dangerous? And he says, no, not really. That's what's the worst thing that could happen when you do that? You know, with a thunderbolt lightning over that. And then the questioner says, well, you could plunge the Earth into a parallel reality and mess up the space-time continuum. And then, well... You see, the Bob Mandela character says, well, people are so distracted, they won't even notice. And you got a good point there, for sure. We are so distracted uh, in the world today. In fact, even many of us who uh, like to pay attention to what's going on, we can be distracted as well, too. We can be distracted by confirmation bias and getting down into wormholes of different things with certain conspiracy theories and the like and get fixated on that rather than really focusing on the reality. And that's part of how I interpret this. And this is really a strong message that really should step on the toes of some of my viewers who believe in some of these conspiracy theories that are just that get so out of whack and so out of crazy. They don't really think about what the re reality is on the ground. And I think that, in a sense, is a conspiracy because they want you to go down that path and go into things so deep and so far removed from the reality of the situation that you lose focus, you get distracted by it. And I think that's the message that we should take from this. But now, his 
a question is, is, oh yeah, where did the S in depends go? Yes, indeed. Well, you know what I always say, it depends on the undergarment. Yes, indeed. Very good. Adult diapers is what that is. So the reality collision is alternate realities. Now, that's one way that that could be interpreted. I think there's another thing as well that's even more dangerous because the general masses are affected by the media. Media creates an alternate reality. The, the major mainstream media is even more dangerous than I think some, than some of these uh, fringe conspiracy theories. And I think that is because they create conspiracy theories that are mainstream. And, uh, and it's really alternate reality. In other words, it's lies. There's a lot of lies in the media. And I think in a sense that stokes some of the fringe conspiracy theories. And we, then we get caught up in confirmation bias on the other end of the spectrum to thinking that we're awake while the mainstream media is woke. And I think that being awake really means being awake to the uh, reality that we see on the ground today with what's going on. The national debt, that's reality. And deficit spending, that's reality. It is unsustainable. But for how long? Well, we have to we have to face the fact and reality that they can probably do this for as long as they can until it doesn't work anymore. When will it not work anymore? When people lose faith in this, the dollar, and we are far off from that happening. Now, many people find that hard to believe and hard to face that fact as as we continue to just uh, uh, abandon and abuse uh, the notion of sound money in this country with our officials to where they basically have come to the conclusion from the old um, Keynesian uh, theory that, you know, the, that the, that the gold is a barbarous relic. Uh, but nonetheless, we know indeed that gold is indeed sound money and it is the most real version of money that you could get out there and silver too. That is reality. And that will not be changed no matter what comes along. And that includes cryptocurrencies as well. Cryptocurrencies do not compare and really are uh, a completely different kind of world than gold and silver. In fact, they can be complemented as alternative investments or speculative assets, but they cannot replace and will not replace gold and silver as sound money. And I think the, the sooner we realize that and understand, there'll probably be less fighting between the crypto people and the gold and silver people. But what this message, I think, could be interpreted several different ways here, but that's how I take it. And I think part of the interesting notion of these messages, these secrets of the debt clock, is that, you know, they're they're put out there and they can be interpreted in different ways. And maybe that's what they want is to spur discussion and spur folks to think about things. What is a parallel reality? Well, it's a parallel reality is essentially where you have a uh, a notion or a concept that is is uh, looked at and viewed in a different way based off of cultures, subcultures, and uh, where you get your information. I, I look at this way, you know, as, as Reagan once said, trust but verify and and you know and listen to all viewpoints and listen to them, but consider them, but think critically. Folks, that's the most important thing we need to do, especially as we engage in, um, in separating ourselves from the system, at least in part by stacking gold and silver. That is profound, folks. When we hold on to gold and silver, no matter what your viewpoints are, you are engaging in a, in a realistic scenario where you have sound money outside of the system. And no matter what your viewpoint is, no matter what your political persuasion is, that is action that is based in reality. That reality will never go away because the Bible mentions gold and silver hundreds of times. The Constitution mentions it in Article 1, Section 10. And to me, those are the two most important documents in world history. And if they are mentioning gold and silver and it's good enough to be mentioned in those documents, well, it's good enough for you and me to be accumulating gold and silver. You really can't go wrong having it and holding it. You only go wrong with how you buy it and uh, the strategy uh, for uh, obtaining it. But nonetheless, so there you go. There is the message for today for the 
U.S. Debt Clock, if you found this uh, this video informative, insightful, and educational, I hope you will take the time to check out the other videos in the playlist. And I will continue to press on. And I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch. And encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.